Okay, let me show you the contents of this video which I am going to cover. So first I will introduce the LTI systems. Then I will talk about the various time domain and the frequency domain analysis of these LTI systems. And then I will talk about the Anaconda and the Spider that will be used for the Python implementation. And uh, then I will talk about the Python control system library that will be used to write the Python program. And in the last I will talk about the Python code for LTI system analysis. So let's go ahead. But before going ahead, I recommend you to watch my following video. That is a LTI system analyzer using the MATLAB graphical user interface. This uh, uh, current video is very much similar to this uh, previous video. Uh, the difference is that all these analysis uh, here I have implemented using the MATLAB. Okay. And in the current video, I am doing the, almost the same analysis uh, with help of the Python. This video you can uh, find on the link which is given in the description. So now let me start the topic. So first I will talk about the introduction to the LTI systems. So LTI systems are actually the linear time invariant systems. Uh, these are the systems which follow the linearity as well as the time invariance. So let's see what are the linear systems. So linear systems are those which follow the homogeneity and the superposition principles. So what is the homogeneity? So now consider this system LTI system which has the input xt and the corresponding output yt. So if for input xt my output is yt then if input is multiplied by some factor a so my input becomes a x t then output is also multiplied by the same factor a so i will get the output a y t so if it happens that i will say my system is following the homogeneity now let's see what is the superposition uh, if i get output y1 for the input x1 and i get output y2 for the input x2 and if I add these two inputs x1 and x2 and give to the system like this, then if my system is linear, then I will get y1 plus y2. Okay. If my system is not linear, I will not get this relationship. So I can combine both homogeneity and superposition uh, like this. So if I give the input a x1 plus b x2 to the system, then the linear system will give this output a y1 plus b y2. So here you can see that both homogeneity, uh, homogeneity and the additivity are uh, combined together. So now let's see what is the time invariance. So if the output due to the input xt is let's say yt and then output due to the delayed input xt minus t is also delayed by the same t. Here you can see. So it means that if your input is delayed by the time t, the output will also be delayed by the same time. The same is true for the time advance. That means if input is x t plus t, then output will also be the t plus t. So this is your time invariance property. It says actually that your system parameters are not changing with the time. So uh, the LTI system, uh, can be characterized entirely by a single function which is known as the impulse response of the system. It is represented by the HT for the continuous time systems and by HN for discrete time systems as you can see in these two figures. So uh, for these systems I can find output YT or YN for any input XT and XN just by the convolution of input with their corresponding impulse responses. So here you can see that in equation 1 and 2, the output is simply obtained by the convolution of input and the impulse response. Uh, these two equations are in the time domain. I can represent these two equations in the corresponding frequency domain. So the equation first can be converted into the frequency domain with help of the Laplace transform. And the second equation, which is the discrete equation, it can be represented in the frequency domain with help of Z transform. So let's see what will be the representation. So equation one and two are represented like this in frequency domain. So this was your yt equal to xt convolution ht. So here you can see that uh, by the convolution property, 
uh, your convolution becomes multiplication in the frequency domain all right same is true for this equation in the discrete I mean in the Z transform. So from the equation 3 I can find the ratio of Ys and axis. So Hs equal to Ys upon axis. Ys is Laplace transform of Yt, axis is the Laplace transform of Xt. So what is this ratio? This ratio is known as the transfer function of the system which is very important for any LTI system. And inverse of it of course it is Ht which is known as the impulse response. Similarly, I can write the same transfer function for the discrete systems also. So, Hz equal to Yz upon Xz. So, LTI system analysis actually is easy where the transfer function plays very important role in it. So, as we know uh, that if I find the roots of the numerator, they are known as the zeros and the roots of the denominator are known as the poles. So, we are aware with the zeros and poles, they are very useful in finding the system stability. And uh, with their placement, I mean the placement of the poles and zeros, I can also predict their time response behavior. So, that is why a transfer function is very important for any LTI system which actually char characterize the system. And it is utilized to analyze both time domain as well as the frequency domain behavior of any LTI system. Now let us uh, see what are the various analysis available for LTI systems. So we can analyze the LTI systems uh, both in time domain as well as in the frequency domain. So here are some time domain analysis, some basics I have covered. Uh, so, in time response analysis, we have the impulse response, step response, ramp response like that. We can do the error analysis uh, where we talk about the steady state error of the system and we talk about the various uh, error coefficients such as static and dynamic coefficients. And uh, stability analysis again very important one uh, with help of the root locus and the Routh Hurwitz, we can talk about the system stability in the time domain. Similarly, we have some frequency domain analysis such as the frequency response. So that can be obtained with help of the Bode plot, polar, log magnitude versus phase plot that is also known as the Nichols plot and uh, stability analysis again very important. So with these uh, Bode plot, polar, Nyquist and the Nichols plot, we can have the idea about the system stability and the various systems stability margins. And uh, we can also modify the frequency response of, a, uh, of an LTI system uh, with help of the compensators. So we can design the various compensators for the required uh, frequency response of, uh, of an LTI system. So in this video, I will uh, go for uh, some of these analysis. Now let us see how we can implement these analysis in Python. So Python, uh, to write the Python program, we have various IDEs. Uh, we can go for uh, uh, spider, PyCharm, etc. It depends on your interest. And uh, you can go for various environments also. Uh, here I am using the Anaconda uh, with a spider IDE. So let us see what is Anaconda. Uh, Anaconda is actually the package and environment manager. Uh, which provides the easiest way to perform the Python and R programming for data science and machine learning and on for general programming on various platforms, Linux, Windows and Mac OS. Anaconda is free, the one good thing is and it is very easy to install and it also offers a community support and worldwide there are millions of users of Anaconda, right. Uh, if you uh, want to download it you can uh, access this uh, link which is given in the description also. So from there you can download the latest Anaconda version and uh, with Anaconda actually uh, we can uh, download various uh, packages and libraries okay and uh, we can easily manage them we can manage the dependencies and environments with Anaconda. And uh, we can develop and train various machine learning, deep learning models. Uh, it has the scikit, TensorFlow, Thanos. And uh, for data analysis, it has various packages like Dask, NumPy, Pandas, Numbas, SciPy. Everything uh, is there in the Anaconda. It's a complete package. 
And for visualization and plotting, we have the matplot, lib, bouquet, data shader, and the hollow views. Uh, if you require some more libraries for your specific task, you can download and easily install in the Anaconda environment. So that is very easy. And uh, now this is the IDE where you will write your code. So in Anaconda, Spider is already there. So it's a very powerful scientific en environment uh, which is written in the Python for Python. And uh, it is uh, designed for actually scientists and engineers and data analysis. And uh, it is very suitable for the scientific computation and visualization. The one good thing about the spider is that it offers the MATLAB like uh, interface. So I personally like spider because I also program in the MATLAB. And uh, it comes with a Anaconda distribution as I said. So there is no separate download is required. Okay, so when you install Anaconda, it will automatically comes inside uh, Anaconda. So if you want more information about the spider, you can access this uh, link, which is also given in the description. Now let's see the Python control system library. So this is the library which is utilized to implement your LTI system analysis. Okay, so uh, the current version is 0.9, uh, which is the latest one. So let's see what is it. The Python control system library is actually the Python package, which implements the basic operations for analysis. And uh, you can design the various feedback control systems with it. Uh, the one good thing about the Python control system library is that it also uh, has the MATLAB compatibility module. So it means uh, the various uh, commands in the MATLAB comp compatibility module, they are similar to uh, the commands which we use in the MATLAB control system toolbox. And also in this current video, I will uh, use only this MATLAB compatibility module so that the both users of MATLAB and Python can understand easily because the commands are similar to each other. And its dependencies are NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and Slycot. Actually, uh, these three are sufficient for almost all applications. Slycot is needed for some advanced uh, applications and requirement. So it is optional to install. So if uh, you want to install uh, this Python control system library, you can install using the PIP by the following commands. Uh, this is PIP install control. As I said, slide code is optional. If you want to do the advanced analysis, you can go for otherwise uh, NumPy, SciPy and Matplotlib are sufficient for your general applications. And for Anaconda, if you want to install inside the Anaconda environment, you can use this code. So in the Anaconda prompt, uh, you have to write this command, conda install C, conda force control. So when you enter it, everything will be automatically installed inside the anaconda right so it's a very easy so now let's see what i am going to do in the current video so in the current video tutorial i will cover following uh, analysis of uh, lti systems so i will show you how you can uh, plot the impulse response step response ramp response body magnitude and phase uh, root locus, Nyquist, and log magnitude versus phase plot that is known as a Nichols plot and the pole zero plot. Okay, and uh, here I will use the MATLAB compatibility module as I said of this Python control library for the programming. Okay, so uh, it uh, will be very easy for both Python uh, users as well as the MATLAB users. So now let's go for the program. This is the program. So first you have to import these packages like uh, from control.matlab since as I said, I'm using the MATLAB compatibility module. So that's why I have written this line. And then from control, uh, I'm importing the step info that will be utilized uh, in uh, getting the various uh, step analysis parameters. Okay, then importing the NumPy for various array operations and then for plotting, I am uh, importing this matplotlib, okay. So now first uh, we have to define your transfer function. 
So here I am defining the numerator and the denominator. It is very similar to what we do in the MATLAB control system toolbox. So here numerator coefficients I have taken 1 and 4 and the denominator I have taken 1, 1, 4. It means my transfer function is s plus 4 upon s square plus s plus 4. Okay. And uh, now with the, this uh, command tf num comma den, I am making its uh, transfer function. So again, you can see if you compare this with the MATLAB, this is exactly the same which we use in the MATLAB. So sometimes it feels that uh, I'm writing Python or MATLAB. So it's a very similar. So that is a good thing about it. And then printing uh, this uh, transfer function. Okay. And uh, here I'm uh, taking another denominator that is 1140 and then taking another system transfer function. So this transfer function is actually s plus 4 upon s cube plus uh, s square plus 4s. Okay. So this 111140. Uh, is representing this transfer function. Why I am taking this transfer function? Actually, this transfer function I will use for the ramp response. Okay, uh, For general analysis, this will be used and only for the ramp response, this transfer function will be used. Now, question is why I am taking this? Uh, because for ramp response, there is no command available. right? So, with help of the step response, I am computing the ramp response. How is possible? Let's see. So CS upon RS is my transfer function S plus 4 upon S square plus S plus 4, right? And I want to find its ramp response. So CS equal to S plus 4 upon S square S plus 4 into RS. That is your input, Laplace of input. So uh, for a ramp response your input is actually t this is ramp so laplace of this is rs which is 1 upon s square so you have to substitute 1 upon s square here so cs equal to s plus 4 upon s square s plus 4 into 1 upon s square right now if i can take one s inside the system my transfer function will be s plus 4 upon s cube plus s square plus 4 s and remaining is 1 upon s okay so what is this output cs i can say that 1 upon s is representing what in the time domain 1 upon s is representing the unit step in the time domain so CS will be the ramp response if I can find the step response of this transfer function. Okay. So the ramp response is equivalent to the step response of this modified transfer function. So this here I am uh, writing this transfer function for the ramp response. So you can see S plus 4 upon S cube plus S square plus 4S. Right. So I am utilizing the step response to get the ramp response in this case right and uh, with these two lines i am uh, actually giving the range of the plot so for example uh, if i want to plot uh, the step response up to tf so here 15 seconds is given you can change it depending on your requirement and then creating this uh, t vector from 0 to tf in the steps of 0.1 for plotting purpose the same what we do in the matlab also and now let's see the code for the step response. So first uh, we are uh, initializing a figure of size 20 by 10 and then this command step sys comma t. t is your vector on which your uh, step response will be evaluated. So again you can see that this is a very similar command what we uh, use in the MATLAB. So it's a perfect match. Okay, so uh, when you execute this step sysst, your step response is calculated all the time. I mean the x axis values uh, go to t1, all the y axis values go to y1. So you can easily plot them. Now this is a very important one. Info equal to step info sys. 
right so step response parameters here uh, are being calculated so step response pa uh, parameters means uh, there are various uh, factors to uh, analyze the step response uh, such as the maximum overshoot and the peak time and the uh, rise time and the settling time okay uh, like this so all these parameters you can uh, find using this command step infosys and uh, here uh, we are uh, printing all these uh, in the python uh, this info actually of type dictionary so we are uh, using these uh, syntax okay so we are uh, showing the rise time overshoot peak time settling time and the steady state value for the step response and then uh, uh, taking uh, uh, an array uh, having all the values one uh, to plot uh, this input okay input line uh, so now plotting uh, the t1 and y1 that means a step response with the red color and then plotting the input uh, with the default blue color uh, with a grid and uh, having the title of the plot step response so it's a uh, very easy now let's go for impulse response here again initializing the figure with the size 20 by 10 and then uh, impulse uh, command is available so just passing the system uh, s y s with the same t and you get these y axis and x axis values in y2 and t2 right and then again uh, to plot the input uh, having all the values zeros uh, you are defining this array i2 and then plotting t2 y2 that means your output in red color and then plotting input that is a zero line actually uh, with the default blue color and then having the title impulse response with a font size 20 and this is the ramp response uh, as i said in the ramp response uh, instead of sys transfer function you have to use sys1 okay so where uh, the denominator is modified as i uh, explained in the previous slides uh, because uh, uh, there is no command for ramp we are using actually the step to find the ramp response so here i'm using the step again for the sys1 instead of sys so your all values will go to the y3 and t3 so you can plot these t3 and y3 uh, with the red color and the input uh, with the default blue color and having the title okay so it's very easy and now go for the pole zero plot so again initializing the figure with the size 20 by 10 and then pz map it's the same function if you compare this with the matlab it's the same function which is also used in the matlab so p and z your all poles will go into the p all zeros will go into the z okay and then plotting uh, the plot is default once this is executed you will get a plot and uh, I'm just adding the title to it and then printing the poles and zeros values uh, in the Python console right and then body plot again initializing the figure and uh, the body is a command again similar to the MATLAB uh, your sys is passed here uh, the plots will be in the red color and you will get the corresponding magnitude curve phase curve and the corresponding x axis values i mean the omega right so once it is executed the plot is default there is no need to write the plot command again and adding the title to this plot now let's do the stability margin so again margin i have uh, this function in the python so when i execute it i will get the gain margin phase margin gain crossover frequency and the phase crossover frequency and then printing all these values in the console and now the Nyquist plot again uh, initializing the figure of size 15 by 15 axis equal and uh, then Nyquist so this is the command which will be executed in the red color there will be a plot and uh, you will get the corresponding outputs uh, generally these are not used there is no use because once you execute it your plot is created automatically and then adding the title to it and uh, now the Nichols plot 
So again the figure initialization of the size 20 by 10 and then with this command Nicole sys your plot will automatically create it and then just adding the title to this plot okay and now in the last the root locus plot so again figure initialization of size 20 by 10 uh, axis of type equal uh, equal is required because uh, if you don't give you will get a uh, distorted output distorted in the sense uh, if there is a circle you will not get circle because of the aspect ratio of your figure so when you write equal you will get a perfect circle if there is a circle in your root locus right for example in this case uh, like uh, two poles and one zeros here so you will get a circle okay so one pole uh, ends its journey at this zero other goes to infinity in search of zero so in this case you must get a circle so if you write this equal axis you will get a circle right and then r locus uh, is your command uh, where it will uh, compute the root locus and it will uh, plot it will create the plot so plot is default right and uh, x limit is minus 10 to 0 what is this x limit so uh, x limit means I am cutting this uh, x axis at minus 10 right it depends on the transfer function also okay so in your case if some uh, uh, root is lying beyond 10 so don't stick to minus 10 okay otherwise you will cut uh, your root locus so if your root is lying at minus 20 let's say then change this limit then uh, limit should be uh, at least minus 25 right so you can include this uh, root at the real axis uh, this i have done just to uh, uh, cut the plot because uh, by default i get a very long uh, plot in the x uh, x dimension so just to look better i have done this otherwise you can omit it and then adding the title to the uh, plot root locus so this is a very simple uh, program uh, you can easily write without any difficulty so let me uh, show you its execution in the python so let me jump to the python and this is my spider ide and the program is already written here so you can see the program right and if you want to uh, change the transfer function you have to change only the numerator and denominator right uh, uh, rest of the things will remain same so you can try this program for different uh, transfer functions just by changing the numerator and the denominator coefficients so here i have taken uh, this s plus 4 upon s square plus s plus 4 so let me run this program i will press this run button okay so i have pressed the run button and all the plot windows are created you can see okay so this is the root locus right so here you can see the two poles you have and one zero which is represented by this red dot so this is a root locus and this is your nicole's plot uh, that is a log magnitude i mean magnitude in db versus the phase in the degree so from here uh, you can also find the stability of the system and this is your uh, Nyquist plot and uh, this uh, uh, firm line is actually solid line is actually representing the polar plot and the dashed line is actually representing the inverse polar plot so it's a complete Nyquist plot and this red plus sign you can see a very small um, here at the minus one so this is your minus one point and uh, if you are aware with the Nyquist uh, theorem uh, you may know that uh, you need to find the encirclement of this minus one point to predict the stability of the system and this is your body plot frequency response of the system so this is the magnitude plot so magnitude is in db and the x-axis uh, in the radian per second and this is the phase plot so phase plot i mean the phase is in degree right and uh, this is a pole zero plot and uh, here you can see that two poles uh, displayed by these cross this first pole and the second pole and there is this is one zero represented by the small circle at minus four so this is pole zero plot and uh, this is your ramp response uh, this is your input blue one is the input that is the function t actually and this uh, red one is your output having some oscillations initially and then transient is uh, vanished then you can see that your output and inputs are equal so that means there is no steady state error uh, in case of the ramp input 
and this is your impulse response uh, so this is your output red one and this is your step response so this blue one is the input I mean line at the one and the red one is your output so now let me show you uh, the other parameters which I have printed on the console so this is your transfer function so with the help of this print gs equal to sys so it is doing this job s plus 4 upon s square plus s plus 4 and uh, here you can see that various uh, uh, step response parameters so rise time is 0.5 seconds overshoot is 50.586% Peak time is 1.38 seconds, settling time 6.9 seconds, and CD state is 1 value. And here you can see the poles and zeros values. And uh, uh, with help of the margins, uh, you got all the stability margins here, like gain margin is infinity, phase margin is 70.58 degree, gain crossover frequency is NN means not a number, uh, this is because uh, if you uh, have seen uh, this uh, body plot, you can see that your uh, phase curve has never touched minus 180 line. So that's why it is NAN. And uh, this uh, phase crossover frequency is 2.82 radian per second. So what is phase crossover frequency where uh, your uh, uh, magnitude curve uh, cuts the zero line. So this is the point uh, where uh, your frequency is 2.18 uh, radian per second, right? So here you got all the stability margins and uh, with help of this you can see that your system is stable and here you achieved all the time domain specifications. So this is how you have analyzed your LTI systems both in time uh, domain as well as in the frequency domain with this simple Python program. So I think it's a very simple and you can easily write it. Uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it and you have learned something new in this video. So I really thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.